if you want to see growth and change, the, you have to be able to do that. Like you have to be able to be open to the idea that you might not know the full whole truth. Welcome to Inner Archaeology. We're so glad you're tuning in and we're excited to dive into like not a complicated existential topic at all. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, just kidding. And then I realized, <laughs> I know I realized you were, I'm full of jokes. <laughs> you tricked, you, look at you with your jokes. You tricked me. I was like, wait, what? I'm pretty sure this I is jokes. like <laughs> the most. <laughs> I get jokes. I'm so funny. That's like one of my favorite things about uh, us is how different our senses of humor are and how they're like not quite aligned. Right. They sometimes like overlap in like irreverence, I think they'll overlap. Mm -hmm. Um, And like self-deprecation, they'll overlap there too. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) But for the most part, it's like, I don't know. Whenever you do your meme, like your meme posts where you do all your memes, I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's just... I think it's because I really, I think like obscurity is really funny. Like, like what the fuck stuff, you know, I think that could be really funny. Like, I can't believe somebody made this. That's usually how Uh I am when I'm stoned. Um, (laughs) About just like the human experience. I'm like, I can't believe any of this exists, but. um, And, and you also like people falling. Yeah. Which like like, surprises me. Like full on like three stooges, like. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that one is like has never I've I I don't know. I've never really that one like I don't that know. one Sometimes. that definitely tickles like a little kid part in me, I think, too. That's like yeah. little Emily think that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so uh, anyway. I, what are we talking about today? Okay. I wanted to talk about the idea of it, like embodying and holding space for paradox. And what I mean I'm by that so is so excited. It's one of the things that are both and both things can ex- things that see- seemingly contradict can in fact exist at the same time. And because we, mm-hmm. our brains want so, our brains like black and white thinking so much. We want to just categorize everything, make it black and white. But I do feel like when we do that, we create so much pain for ourselves and we actually like limit our ability to experience a lot of joy and pleasure in life. <laughs> Listen, I take this one step further because, and think, because I actually believe, and I know this sounds like a big claim but I I actually believe that this is like one of the key pieces to like making light like the meaning of life Mm. (laughs) I really do I feel like it is like one of the key truths that like actually is so essential to like happiness like yeah because at least it's it has been for me like Mm. and I I don't know I feel like I can see and I think as I've gotten older more and more this like becomes like a bigger and bigger truth for me and it becomes something that like I don't know I just like is such a core belief of mine uh that when I see it like not in others I'm just like that's that's like why you're unhappy this is, your, this is the source of all your <laughs> this is it this is yeah. like the source of happiness uh-huh. I mean for me anyway it is it's like a fucking essential truth anyway there's so I don't much make like claims like that very often that is a big claim <laughs> that I don't hear that from you often and I, I, I really never like say that things like that yeah it's like but this one to me is like the secret to life or mm. a part of it a big mm. big part of it yeah so there's anyway there's when you so... said you wanted to talk about this I was like fuck yeah <laughs> I'm down <laughs> yeah there's so much about and I'm trying to like you know, so like if we if we broke it down and tried to kind of identify where this is happening, I, I really think it's like when your mind is making limiting claims, like you're only allowed to do this if this or like mm-hmm. that's only going to be possible if this first is established. And a lot of times that's an area I feel like the, the embracing the paradox can help a lot where it can be both. Mm-hmm. And you can be mm-hmm. you can, you know, be sad and experience happiness in your life in other areas and both things can exist at the same time. And I really think that that was something big that I I learned through like losing my mom and through experiencing mm-hmm. big sad and big grief is that I, I realized how 
much more expansive I was than I than I thought I was, you know. And sure, there's moments where grief or sadness or loss can feel all encompassing. And then, but the thing that we do, this is where our our binary brain that wants to do black and white thinking comes in, is like I'm experiencing sad, a very justifiable sad. And then mm-hmm. I have a moment of happiness that's wanting to creep in or laughter or pleasure or something. And this binary part of my brain jumps up and goes, no, we're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. And if you do do that, you're going to be riddled with so much guilt that you're going to wish you never did it. <laughs> and it's like, it's really intense. And 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 because this part of you is, is unwilling to embrace, there's these parts that want the binary mm-hmm. and do not want to embrace the both and. And I've experienced so much like more pleasure and joy and liberation when like I've just given myself permission to both and you know it also it's also like the anecdote to judgment and being judgmental Mm -hmm. is like this belief and that brings more happiness into your life yeah Like, like just like immediately I feel like you know it's like the judgment is on like the opposite side of like happiness it's like very hard to like have a lot of judgments towards other people and like Mm. genuinely be happy Mm. um at least for me and I think that this is like what allows for that um and also it's like it prevents you from moving through the world kind of being victimized by other people's opinions which I see happening all the time Mm. you know what I mean where like if somebody like doesn't agree with you suddenly that's like an assault on your character And Mm. that is painful and just like a pain that is completely created in our own brains, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are, get more comfortable with the idea that there is like, like paradox can exist, Mm -hmm. that just like kind of starts to like, like evaporate for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or at least for me. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Like the, the whole, um, if somebody has this like negative opinion of me, then like my entire opinion of myself Ooh, is threatened. It's really interesting that you interpreted yeah. it that way is not what I meant. Okay. I actually meant um, when somebody just like has a difference in belief of like how to go about life. I got you. Okay. Yeah. But yours is true too. Like that's also like another that. yeah. like that's, that's <laughs> both a, and. That, also that. Uh, both. Yeah. Both and. Both and. And, um, and I think that Okay, another layer of this is when we experience like maybe joy in some area of our life, but we feel like we can't, we feel like we can't fully experience it because other people have it so hard. Or Mm. I see Mm. this a lot in mom, mom culture, right? Mm. Where like somebody is like so excited that they're successfully breastfeeding, but they have to like have an asterisk. Like, I know that this is a struggle for so many people. I hope my joy doesn't like hurt your joy. And I'm like, it's kind of unfortunate that we think that I, I, I mean, I do this. I definitely do this. So I get it. But it's something I'm trying to push back on is like, it's okay. Like I can experience my joy in like this particular area. Um, And it doesn't like, I'm not responsible for that to like, to, to add a caveat or to, to curb what I'm saying or to like minimize my joy in this area, just because somebody, I know that there are people out there experiencing pain in this area. Like it's such an unfortunate Mm -hmm. thing that we have and that we do. Yeah, And it's, it comes from a good place. It comes from a place of empathy, but I've just really been thinking a lot about how like all those things exist together and we all, but then like you also have some area of your life that you've experienced tremendous grief and pain and somebody else hasn't Mm -hmm. had that be a problem for them. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, my struggles with addiction, do I wish that other people had that (laughs) to like, or do I wish that people like were less joyous uh, because I had this struggle. Fuck no. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I just, I see it in so many areas. And, um, I really think the solution to all of it is to just know that they can all coexist and they all coexist all at the same time. Like yeah. always, mm-hmm. always all across the universe. Somebody is having a gut wrenching, horrible, like life altering, painful, situation that is just like devastating and somebody is like having the most blissful experience of like love and joy and it's always all happening Mm -hmm. all the time yeah and it's 
what and makes it fucking awesome the human experience <laughs> like, and there's it's like rich it. yeah it's richness it's yes. like when you allow for paradox and things to exist simultaneously it's it brings like richness into your life yes um yes. and anyway. there's like <laughs> there's layers in there like it just it just reminded me like an area that i have experienced being on the um like the reminded of my pain part uh, is definitely absolutely like with my mom and, and, mm -hmm. and it was definitely more inflamed earlier than it is now that you, a few years have passed, but, but still sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll hear something, see somebody really enjoying like time with their mother. And this part of me pops up. That's like, mm -hmm. Oh, that must mm -hmm. be like so wonderful to do, to do that. Or it especially gets kicked up if like, there's like, my mom's driving me crazy, you know? And then I'm like, I wish I had my mom driving me crazy, you know? <laughs> but what I've done there, and this is where, cause this is giving me, right. This is giving me layer, what it does for me and how I view it. Not, not as like this person's not allowed to enjoy their mom or complain about their mom or whatever. There's room for that. And where, what I see it as for me is this is an area that I have pain and that I can nurture myself. And so when that mm. stuff happens and when it pops up, I just like, I, I, I like take a second to take care of that part. Yeah. Like you're sad. Like you have grief and that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. And I'm so fucking glad that that lady right there is getting to have like a picnic lunch with her mom and her baby or whatever, you know, and that I'm mm -hmm. like so glad that that still exists and that actually vicariously I can experience some happiness. So there is like, even in pain, there's like a level mm -hmm. of happiness that the person who has pain can tap into. But a lot of times we let the pain block us from there or get frustrated with the other people. So there, but there's a lot of layers of work to do there. That is such, such a good area to, to know this is where I need to nurture and care for myself, but that's a bit of a tangent. <laughs> and, and I'll say that it's also okay. Cause I think sometimes when the pain is too raw, it's okay to like remove yourself from create situations. boundaries. Absolutely. That like, Absolutely. it's just like, cause when things like that are real fresh, like, I don't know. Sometimes you can't deal it's with it like all the time. Not, it's not, yeah, it's like, it's just a lot. And yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, I have to say, and I'm so hesitant to say this because it's such a controversial topic, but I felt like the entire time that when everything was going on with like the vaccine and COVID, like this was kind of my like belief around it was that there were so mm. many truths that contradicted each other that were n like, a like truth that both sides had an incapable, like were incapable of seeing the other like side mm. that it was like, it was like so frustrating for me. And as more and more time like goes on and it, it becomes like more just like, almost like moving towards like being obsolete, this whole like fight that happened. I'm just like so frustrated at how people treated each other during mm. that time. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just like, look at how you all treated each other. <laughs> Can we, like, I'm just like, that's what I'm left with is like, mm. uh, and, and shock at the inability for both sides to see that each side had some truth. Had truth. Yeah. Because there were, there were truths on both sides. And yeah. if you, I mean, some people are still incapable of seeing that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just like, for me, while it was all playing out, like that was like what made my blood boil more than mm -hmm. anything else. Uh, and you know I what? Because I felt stuck in the middle, honestly. Yeah. Because I was like, I can see how there are people who genuinely fear taking this vaccine justifiably so and there are people being harmed by it like there are actual like payments going out <laughs> to people being mm -hmm. harmed by this like it's not it's not always a good call for everyone mm -hmm. and then seeing how it did like it was helpful and it was you know what i mean i was just like ah fuck <laughs> like and i think like the thought there for me, and I think this is part of maybe the origin of why the two sides couldn't see each other is because the root motivating thing was not wanting to be harmed or cause harm for, to others, really, like mm -hmm. on both sides, like not wanting to do something that's harming. 
and so the 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 origin root thing were was pretty much like the same for both <laughs> sides. It was, and the I think same that's why. Thing. Yeah, and I think and that's I was why like, it was so hard to see. see. Yeah, I was like, you guys can't even see how similar you are, especially yeah. the people who ended up at like extreme ends of the camp. You know what I mean? Like mm. the people who weren't in the middle on both sides. I was like, oh, you all are like you're all this. You're the same. You're different yeah. flavors, but you're the same. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but again, the one thing that frustrated me the most was the inability or the re- the refusal even. Mm for the extremists on both sides to see the other person's point of view Mm -hmm. and also how they treated each other in the process. That was like, (gasps) and I mean, and I'm a firm believer. (laughs) I did not. If you want to see change or you want to see, if you want to see growth and change the, you have to be able to do that. Like you have to be able to be open to the idea that you might not know the full whole truth and that there there's, there's something of value. Like moving through the world that way is like so much more rich, the, I think too, you know? The fact, well, the fact that anyone thought that they could move through that time period with a hundred percent certainty of so much of what they were saying, you know what I mean? when it was like all happening in like real time was like, Mm -hmm. that was baffling too. Right. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, Oh my gosh. The other thing is, is like, if again, going back to what you were saying is like, if you actually are interested in making real change, you know, the, the being angry and yelling and um, being black and white in your thinking only gets through to people who already agree with you. Yeah. And it's just like a mob mentality. But if you like really want to make change, you have to be able to like hear perspectives different from yours and be able to have conversations. But that's like not, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's like valued as much or something anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think in the world of like having so much data and information, you can find like data and information and that to backs support up any thought that yeah. backs up almost any belief. Obviously mm-hmm. I'm speaking like in big generalities right now, um, which can get messy, but uh, yeah. And so I just think that people forget that. And so I don't know. I find it like seriously problematic. Um, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's so much there in like how our digital lives are further like dividing people because it's just feeding you more of the same shit and you're not having your mindset challenged or anything like that. But I do think like kind of going back to like this idea of embracing the both and that both things can exist at the same time. It's a very expansive way of thinking and it gives you permission to be surprised, to be like, you know, I didn't expect to like learn from this or or whatever. Like, I mean, that's the- Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. No, I just, I'm like- Well, it just reminded me of- fired up. It just reminded me of like the, the idea that sometimes like the your greatest teachers come from like the most unexpected places too, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and like that, that paradox, you know, and it could come from like somebody who was like really difficult and like, not like aware at all, not what you thought what a teacher would be, but then all of a sudden here you are like learning so much and mm-hmm. keeping that like in my mind, like that's, that's a core thing for me kind of going through the world is trying to be like, what, what is it for me to learn from this person? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway yeah yeah and I think that it's so good because another element of allowing this be be to be a part of your belief system or or how you try to like uh look at the world is that it actually creates less pain for you in the long term I think because when you change your mind or when you decide that you want to embody something different or, you know, shedding, like you're not as like attached to certain identities and beliefs mm. because of this underlying belief, right? Because mm. I think that like, I don't know, I've just so much pain that I've experienced in my life has been when I've tried to change or shed something that like no longer serves me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm trying to think of an example. 
I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like no examples like coming to mind. I don't know. Maybe like drinking. Like that's a big thing for people when they stop drinking, but they were the party girl. They were the one who like got people to go out like that. That's like a common thing you see. And they're like, Oh, well, what, who am I when I like shed this or yeah. how can I like, we have such a, we have such a, there's so much pain when we think about backpedaling on something that we've like claimed as part of who we are for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this kind of like prevents you from experiencing a lot of that pain because you're like, kind of inherently in the belief you're giving yourself permission to change your mind, which yes. I think is so important to growth and happiness and like, ugh. anyway, this is huge to, to understand the self as, as a paradox instead of like a singular consistent thing. Um, and the, and, and shedding the belief that the only thing that is of, of value is that way of thinking and this like consistent, like whatever. And I, and I really think there are some people that are, you know, in their life a little, maybe a little bit more like consistent, but I think like when you embrace that human to be human is to, to be a paradox, like a walking living mm-hmm. paradox and, mm-hmm. and understand, I mean, and then you could, there's like all the layers of like cognitive biases that like play a role. And that's, what's really reinforcing, like, no, there's a story that I'm telling about myself. And so I'm not allowed to change my mind here. And that effectively just like stunts growth, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when you're able, when you... sorry, go ahead. No, you I'm go for it. Fired up. Yeah. No, because I was going to go a different tangent. So if you have more on this. No, I was just like wrapping up that thought. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I'm all jacked on this thought because I just, I see it causing so much pain in people. I was going to say the other thing that this belief allows for, at least in my life, is that when you see other people living a life like wildly different from your own, that you're like, holy shit, that is not the life for me. But like you do you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't like get on you where I feel like before I like really, really integrated this belief system. I don't know. You would see someone living a life that literally is not causing anyone harm at all. You know what I mean? But it's just so wildly different than like how you would like live your life. And mm. I would just, I would see it and it would be so much, more, it would be uncomfortable for me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas now, I, I don't know. It's like it's 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 its own entity that's separate from me and doesn't. I'm not like walking around, ju- like in kind of like I guess judging people right. through the lens of like what I how I would live my life and your values. and that is like yeah. insanely freeing because it's like I don't know, especially after coming from. I don't know, even like religious, like upbringing and like pulling away from that. But now I feel like I'm like much more comfortable with that than I ever was. Mm -hmm. Um, Or I mean, it could even just be somebody walking down the street with like a crazy fucking outfit on where you're like, what is happening there? Mm -hmm. Um, And how it just like, I don't know. It doesn't um, get like, it doesn't like impact you. It's like, right. it's just its own thing. Yeah. And if anything, it, it opens help. up. I'm, put, I'm like, help me put this into words. <laughs> no, this is, this is a really good thought. Cause, cause if anything, this way of thinking is, is opening up space to kind of just like, and maybe it's not like agree or be like, yeah, like I, I would wear that outfit, but it's just like, I guess I'm kind of glad that somebody exists that would wear that, you know, it's like almost this like right. deeper level of like appreciating the world or just the, mm. the, the, the uniqueness and nuance and complexity. But yeah, like you're talking about this like binary thinking and this is just such a beautiful angle to look at it from. Cause when you're thinking like the, the only thing that's good, the only truth that there is and the only thing of value that there is in this world is like what I deem to be good and truthful and valuable, then you effectively like you get, live in a pinhole and anything that mm-hmm. that anything that goes against that your way of thinking and believing, even if that is so true to you, um, will feel threatening, will feel some right. sort of like threatening or in some way that either, mm-hmm. that either you need to like put it down or 
or you need, or sometimes it'll like fall back on you and you'll feel like judgmental towards yourself in weird ways. And I think it's Mm -hmm. like, this is such a liberating thought to be like that these two things can exist at the same time. And that's okay. Yeah. It brings ease into your life too. Mm -hmm. It's like happiness and ease because you're just like, I don't know, other people's stuff doesn't get on you as much. That's why Mm -hmm. I love this belief Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so much. And I think it's like, I don't know, it just alleviates like so much internal drama on so many layers. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I really like, I love it. I can't can't remember where I heard this thought, but – how there are like core, like core human, like expressions, I guess, that are so deeply rooted in paradox. It's, it was like very interesting for me to be like, oh, wow. It's just like in everything, like the idea Mm. of love, the idea of love in Mm. itself is a paradox because it, it is something that needs to be, it is something that is present even when something's unlovable. Right. Like, Mm. like, and uh, hope is another one. Like hope is 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 this idea that it still exists even when things are hopeless, right? And and I feel like it's just so fundamental and foundational to who we are. But it creates a complexity, and I think I think our brain sometimes wants to like simplify and make things like mm-hmm. black or white. And and I think that there's something so abundant about bringing awareness to that part of yourselves and giving yourself permission to expand and embrace the paradox Mm. and like give your, give, give yourself permission to exist within it. You know, it does create for a much like broader, I think more rich. um, And, and just the idea of like being surprised and delighted by things that you otherwise would have completely shut off, you know, totally, totally. Um, that's yeah that's a big one that because it's just like I don't know the diversity of like human experience is so rich and so broad it's almost like mind-blowing yeah and I don't know being open to hearing other people's experiences is just like I don't know it's been far a far better experience for me um and I don't know I just love it Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it is like it is this idea of like it exists outside of us sometimes it's maybe a little bit more apparent that you could see it outside of us but it is happening constantly within us and like experiencing right experiencing that battle within you um there and that's a lot of like the work I do is like helping people identify that and where can you give yourself permission for the both Mm -hmm. and that you both can be successful and be like have imposter syndrome that both of those things could happen at the same time, you know, or you can both be like happy and experience like some confusion or uncertainty or anxiety. And that all is like, yeah, permissible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. It's like, it's the thinking of yourself in parts, you know, um, I don't know. That has been like one of the most healing things that I've introduced into my like thought process Mm -hmm. because I don't know, just like on a daily basis, I think we experience that. Um, Totally. But it's a, I mean, this is like something that they like is taught in like marketing and copywriting is that because we talk a lot about core desires in people and a Mm -hmm. core desire is to appear consistent. And so it's funny because anytime I come across that and like marketing literature and like education materials and stuff, I'm like, one, I don't think I have that as much anymore. Like I wouldn't be susceptible to like marketing that like touches on that. Right. Okay. <laughs> I think, mm-hmm. but two, I think it's also really interesting at how much power you give yourself when you're aware of just your own psychological tendencies, which is mm-hmm. one of the reasons I love teaching copywriting. Because once you like learn it, you're just like less susceptible to it. You know what I mean? Because you're totally you. you, It's like awareness is brought to like the hard wiring of your brain, and then that gives you an option to kind of either work with it or push back on it. Or, and that's like one of the cool things just about our brains in general, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have the ability to like think our way into 
better a better life really yeah um which is fucking bananas (laughs) yeah yes that's it (laughs) it's so powerful so Mm -hmm. it is oh I love this topic so much I'm Mm -hmm. sure more will come from this but I I yeah I feel like this is like a cornerstone of my happiness so I'm glad you brought it up (laughs) yeah I love it this is good Oh, yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Until until next time, my friends. Yes, yeah. Yes. We will see you on wrap up? the next episode. Yep. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right, bye.